maybe a flatter grassy area or a nice long straightaway would be great. So the strides are great to add on to any of your normal warm up routines. They should really be used especially if you're going out for a nice harder faster run or any kind of a sprint workout. Remember these strides are good for a beginner all the way up to an expert runner. Try these once a week to really help dial in on your form and take them out onto your long runs to help you become a better, faster, stronger. Drop in the comments below and let us know how it goes. All right. See so you had for breakfast. Let's see. I had a banana and cereal and tea. All right. Welcome back, guys. This is TRE. Live show number 57. 57. Are you, are you feeling it? Hey, we both have 57. our Run Experience shirts on today. If you are joining us on Facebook or on YouTube, you can hit down the Gleam link. We have our weekly contest coming up. If you are joining us in the audio only podcast version of this. Oh, we went there. Uh, well, welcome, because we this is the first time we've done this. And uh, I am I am recording this uh, both in audio and video, Ooh. so we can do our do our voices sound boomy and bassy enough. Let's hope, let's hope, because we you know, we have been talking about doing an audio version of this, and for you guys who have joined us for so long, um, we want to offer that to you. Of course, it won't be live, and you won't be able to ask questions the way that you can uh, on YouTube or on Facebook. But um, for you guys joining us a little bit later and want to do an audio only version. Perhaps you're running yes. right now. If you're running right now, keep your shoulders back. Oh. Kiss your butt pass. under. <laughs> Increase your cadence, all those things. Anyhow, we want to entertain you for the next hour because we have a lot to talk about. We do have shoes. a lot of great things to talk <clears throat> about. Our, our Can we just show the cheers because we, we are back after a little hiatus. I know, last after week. last week, yeah. we got our smoothies here. Cheers to you guys in the green smoothies. And I want to say something about the, uh, the little quick clip that I posted last week. I was at brunch with my family and we did went live just to like let you guys know that, that we were not doing a full episode that week. And my little nephew, Brennan, was very dismayed afterwards when he watched the video because I mentioned his brother and his sister, but I did not mention him by name. So to my nephew, Brennan, <laughs> this one is for you. I cracked up when I saw that. I just watched it, you know, about 20 minutes before and... You know, Craig is sitting around with his family at this at breakfast table and he has like the cutest little nieces and nephews and they have like, they're at the age where like some of them only just have like a few teeth. Oh yeah. And they're just like mugging and like making faces and like doing bunny ears in the back. And like poor like Craig's like, you know, brothers and sisters and uncles are just kind of like clammed yeah. up. Right? Cause you know, like in your adult, you're in front of the camera the first time. The difference between being a kid and being are a, just yeah. like born to be, they're gonna have their own YouTube That's channels true. at some point. Yeah. Uncle Craig is showing the way. And we, we the other thing we have, we have a, a new tripod setup, which you guys can't see, but Nate is very excited about, which means that you can see us at eye level for the first time. We always had to look up a little bit. And, uh, and you can see yeah. wonderful TRD t-shirts. Yeah. Um, but Tell we us, have, where can they get TRD t-shirts like this? <laughs> Do we have our t-shirt store set up? I think so. I don't know anything about this stuff anymore. <laughs> Somebody on our team knows. Oh Email Lee at the Run Experience and she'll tell you where oh, you can buy a t-shirt. Oh we, uh, we are getting out more gear. Uh, we just released a new t-shirt, uh, a limited run, yes. that um, is out and about. So for these guys who ordered it, it is on its way, don't worry. Um, Did I order one? Because I haven't seen them yet. I have ordered one for you. That's so fantastic. Have you have to take care of your tech support, so ladies and gentlemen. You know, my family was here uh, for the holiday week last week and basically went shopping in the TRE headquarters store. <laughs> And they're like, hey, I'm taking a t-shirt. Hey, I want one too. I want... I'm like, all right, just take all whatever right. you want. Um, I love it. So on to today's business at hand. Our yeah. main topic today is are your running shoes killing you? And this is inspired partly by our guest, special guest who's going to be calling in in about 15 minutes, Mark Morissette, who is the founder of Strike Movement, uh, which is a very cool, I just kind of say innovative shoe company. Yeah, and you and I have been caught wearing those around town uh, most times. Yeah, you, we're, we're wearing them all the time. Yeah. Is there, they've kind of defaulted to one of my go-to um, shoes in my videos. So if you watch a lot of the videos that uh, we're doing, especially if I'm doing anything, you can see my feet. 
I'm wearing like a black and white shoe or lately this kind of fun leopard print slip-on shoe. This is the strike movement. You know, you have more strike shoes than I do. Why is that? Because I talk about, I don't know. I talk about them more. Hmm, okay. You got a bone to pick? Right. Yeah, no, I do. Craig. I'm going to pick that bone with Mark when he gets back <laughs> on here. I was like, I don't have a pair of slip-ons. Well, anyway, from? Um, unlike ungrateful Craig over here, we are going to hook you up with uh, a pair of strike movement shoes by entering this week's giveaway. So click that Gleam link down below. You have the opportunity to you know, learn a little bit more about Strike. We'll have Mark on. We'll talk a lot about this company, why it's different, and yeah. why we think it's really important for runners to spend time in a shoe like this which is really going to be today's main topic. We're really to have shoe time that you're spending in non-running shoes, not yes. just, because uh, a lot of us, and myself included, we used, I used to just take my running shoes and they become my kicking shoes yeah. uh, when I'm not running. Now, I think what's important for today, because we're talking about shoes, is that we pull out a few different examples. Okay. Do you want me to go get examples? Do you want to go get an example of, say, some of like the Maximalist shoes and maybe, maybe get the Hoka's? The new balances and your pair of strikes. This appears to me as something that uh, we could have done pre-show. We could have done pre-show. You pre just came up with it right now. We're, you know, we're, we were testing some All things. Right. So anyway, hit the Gleam link down below to enter this important giveaway. And, and uh, wait, sorry, just, yeah. yeah, Gleam link below. But just to just so you know, we want to take your, your questions around shoes. This is not just about yeah. about uh, specific shoes. We want to talk about shoes just in general. Um, we started doing shoe reviews last year, so we got more into it. We actually went and did like a little short education with Running Warehouse to find out more about how they educate their staff on shoes and get a little bit yeah. deeper into how shoes are made. We're gonna talk to Mark about that. And hopefully you guys learn something along with us. Um, I'm gonna go get, I have lots of shoes. Yeah. Let's right get a back. few pairs, you go right back. So, you know, one of the things that was inspiring for me to, to talk about this subject today was, uh, it was actually a blog post I wrote a couple years ago, and I'm gonna share the link in the post because it's something that definitely seemed to you know, resonate with people. And I was kind of piggybacking off of some other, a New York Times uh, post out there that was talking about uh, maximalist shoes, this new trend, obviously we're seeing pretty much all companies put out these like super cushion shoes. And the, the idea with these shoes, a lot of people wear them and they feel better, things like this. And guys, by the way, we're talking about this, we love all these brands, we're not we're knocking any particular brand, we're just asking questions and thinking a bigger picture way. Nor are we promoting any specific Nor brand. are we promoting any specific one either. Uh, but I will tell you some of the shoes I like. <laughs> but what was interesting, and this is a thing I wrote <coughs> two years ago, uh, so commenting on this was that this, there's a study done, the idea that you know runners in higher cushion shoes, the premise is that I have less impact when I hit the ground. And one of the things they found that was actually the opposite. It's a magical feat of physics, all of a sudden the impact goes away. Yeah, right, but like in actual fact, like people, runners are like trying to find the ground, so in certain respects, they're almost striking the ground harder mm -hmm. with those higher cushion shoes. And they've seen an association um, with uh, tibial stress fractures, and plantar fasciitis. Yeah. So I bring that up to say it's not that these aren't important tools, they don't work, but we have to understand what they do, and all of a sudden, if I start to wear this shoe all the time, it becomes my walking around shoe, yeah. it becomes my gym shoe, it becomes my everything shoe, God, I hope it's that gym becomes shoe. a problem. You, you know, the, the funny thing about just physically, like if you have force going into your shoe, it has to go somewhere. Like. It, it can get dissipated in terms of where it distributes on the shoe, but eventually it's, it does get tra traveled yep. through your body. So um, shoes distribute force in a lot of ways, but they don't get rid of force, if yeah. that makes any sense. They don't, and you know, there are some things that are cool. So we've got this one. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, your Indian slippers. They're Moroccan. That was racial. Sorry, your Moroccan slippers. Because everything about that shoe screams Actually, they're not Morocco. Moroccan. Sorry, they're Turkish. Turkish, sorry. Oh, you don't even know. Well, I didn't look at the well, thing until right now. Well, double racial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, these are Sabas. Yes. Um, you can buy them on Instagram. And if you're listening on our brand new podcast, Craig and is holding up I'm some holding, oh, yellow right, leather we, shoes that almost look like Aladdin's shoes. You know what? I was at an Indian wedding, my cousin's wedding over last week. I wore these with my outfit because they, they work. Yeah. And so uh, I actually spent a lot of time in them and I like them. 
um, specifically because they have a low profile. So there's again that zero heel drop. And so for my, I actually think about it when my everyday shoes, either I'm barefoot in my house or I want to be in a low profile. So it's kind of a joke that I'm holding up these, these kind of moccasin type of shoes. Yeah. Um, but they are kind of like Tom's, but they last a lot longer yeah. and are a lot more expensive. Now we're going through a few different more things, but, uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta bring, we get a lot of comments and questions. So oh yeah. Far. yeah. Should we start Let's to say hi to people. Say Edmund's hi. here. Um, I see. So shout out to David Friswell. What's up, man? Good to see you. Heather Jurgensen, David Swiggett, Anne Marie Chappelle. Hey, from St. Joseph, Missouri. All right. GDK Mouse. Um, for all of you England fans out there, I'm uh, sorry. That was Heartbroken. A rough one yesterday. Rough one yesterday. Man, I mean, it's so. I was so hopeful when they were up in the first half. Are you guys following? I don't know if you're following the, the World, World Cup. Cup. Um, I get World Cup fever after the you know the knockout rounds in the elimination round. I really get into it. And there's nothing that I would like better than to see Croatia crush France. That'd be kind of cool on right? Sunday because one, Croatia has never won, and two, fuck France. Sorry, can I say that? I can't say it. Um, yes, you can. <laughs> France, France in their semifinals, they were such poor sportsmen in the last ten minutes of the game, ah. and I just found it to be. They're actually like if you look at the five thirty eight blog, yeah. which is a great blog. They did a statistical analysis on who wastes the most time. France was like number three. Oh, interesting. And they were just being. Uh, I, I didn't watch that game, so I can't comment it on Anyhow, either. Anyhow, I have no allegiance to France. Let's, let's get back to our comments and questions of people because we have a few more oh, things totally here. Shoes. Okay. I know. Well, we we gotta we just started the list. Yeah. So Anne Marie Chappelle, hey from Saint Joseph, um, Q Dancer 0411 from the Netherlands. What's up, Joshua Levine. Hyde? Brent says sup roasters. Pedro, good to see you. Boston Mass. Susan, hello from North Dakota. What's up, Susan? Um, Heather, what's up, Heather? You already got her. Joshua, I'm going to get new shows before yeah, a lot new of shoes people before cross country starts. Megan says uh, it's because it's coincidence because I'm going to get new shoes today. Which shoes are you going to get, and are you going to the store to decide, or are you going in there with the mindset of like, hey, this is the type of shoe I want? Totally, um, I love that. You don't go into. I mean, most people don't walk into a car dealership and are like. Show me all the cars. They're like, you know what? I kind of want a sedan. I want a hatchback. Yeah, they're a little And educated. shoes are very similar to cars in that they're a transportation for your feet. No. Oh, but well, that's actually pretty good. Like but that. actually, you know, if you look at the lines of cars, like Honda has a hatchback. They have now a hybrid. They yeah. have uh, an SUV. They have all, they have different genres of cars and every car company has one type of car, maybe sometimes double. We learned that on. when we went to the running warehouse yeah. last year. And shoe companies are similar. They are like, hey, we need something in this arena. We need a, like a sh uh, They have like their all around shoe, which is yeah. like if you're a new runner, it's like, hey, let's just start with one running shoe. Right. And then they move towards, oh, what's a great long distance shoe? What's a good uh, tempo shoe, which is usually a little lighter. Yeah. Uh, all the way down to racing flats. And and you can tell the type of company um, based on which like arenas they play in. So yep. for example, Ultra never really had any workout shoes, but they just came out with a, what's it called? Their HIT the trainer, hit, right? The and high intensity interval This is, is, is similar in concept to this shoe from Strike, yep. which is, is a platform shoe. Not necessarily meant for like mileage in terms of running. Yeah, um, but a great, but great all around shoe and great to take into the gym. Run, travel, work yeah. out in, and do all the things that we promote runners do to be healthy. And I like traveling with these shoes because oh, well, not this one. Yeah. I like traveling with my old pair. I was doing I was doing heavy deadlifting, box jumps, and like ten second all out um, treadmill sprints in this shoe this morning. Okay, because it has like their like. Their platform, which is like their normal like running shoe. I platform. personally would great. want. I, I would have wanted one that has laces. Yeah, personally. I, I got nice like little piggy fat feet, so this works out pretty well for me. Yeah. Um, let me see here. I run things. Says, are you aware of any shoes similar to the Asics Hyperspeed? I'm not familiar with the Asics Hyperspeed, so I am not sure. Mark's um, gonna hate me because I have robo laces on my shoe. I know. Mm. Uh, what else here? Edward says I'm starting to do some weight lifting to supplement my strength training. Are these shoes about? Are these are there shoes that are specific to lifting? And what should I know about? So Edward, for lifting shoes specifically, you're like there is a world of Olympic lifting shoes where basically it's a it's a shoe with a wooden platform that's a little bit raised, that's super stiff. It's pretty extreme. Necessary, I would, unnecessary for a runner. Probably unnecessary for a runner. I agree. Um, it actually helps you squat deeper by uh, lifting your heels so you don't have to challenge your ankles much. I'd much rather have you lifting barefoot 
mm-hmm. or in a super, where's like your, your van? Like something like this, like crazy colors aside, this just like this. flat platform yeah. or something like this because it's, you're low to the ground, you have a good feel. And this is where like the Hoka, and guys, if you're listening, we're holding up different shoes. The Hoka, like I've got this high cushy platform, like maybe great on the road and the trail, not a good choice when you're trying to squat or deadlift heavy or do anything you like that. You know, my sister just got a pair of Hoka's and um, these, I don't know what your experience is, but my experience is the Hoka's take a long time to break in. I yeah. think it's because of the amount of midsole and cushioning there. Yeah. Um, it takes a while for that to settle into whatever your you know stride totally. is. Um, but don't judge it based off the first even two weeks. You kind of got to put in some time on this. My feet ached in these shoes for a good amount of time. Now, if you, maybe you're used to it, maybe it changes things. But when I, I always, I mean, because we have so many shoes coming in, I swap shoes out. Um, so I have these. Um, what would you consider these ones? Uh, so is you got a mid. Yeah, so the, the New Balance Fresh Foam, I just did a review of this. I've been running in this. I'll be running in this shoe in the San Francisco Half Marathon. Really? That's your yeah, shoe, huh? That's going to be the shoe. You're not going to go um, with the... Uh... No, like this right now, because I've been dealing with a little Achilles thing, oh, uh, right. I'm, I'm more ready. Like I like this shoe because it's pretty light, uh, pretty flexy, uh, pretty responsive, and it has a low heel drop. It's probably like yeah. five or six millimeters. I've been doing most of my mileage in one of these two shoes yep. recently. Um, I like the problem with the New Balance for me is that it's a little bit too narrow. So, someone was asking about um, numbness in the feet. Um, okay, hey, uh, Rob Barbie says, hey from Michigan, would a low profile shoe help with numbness? My current shoes are not too tight or anything, they just can't seem to solve this. So, Numbness is a thing where potentially there is some sort of pinched nerve that's occurring. Yep. And that could be a result of the shoe, but it could also be a result of other types of mechanics that are totally irrespective of the shoe. So we want to make sure that your feet are really strong and healthy and, and mobile and moving well. We've got some videos on our channel that, that dig into that so we don't go too far down that well right, right. now. Um, ultras and things like ultras or shoes that have a wider toe box are great because they really let your feet expand and 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 splay out every time you land your feet will will splay yep so what happens though if you're in a shoe that's a little bit too narrow that your feet are a little bit boxed in and that can create some problems if, if i was experiencing numbness one of the things i would do is is you know midway through a run get out into a field take your shoes off that's interesting and, and do see some striders see if the numbness goes away and or see what happens like there yeah um I, yeah, I'm not saying you all of a sudden jump into barefoot running. Right. What I'm saying is a do some bit. like striders, not even sprinting, because sprinting is a pretty extreme thing to do barefoot. But get into a soft grassy patch. Yeah. And then do like four to eight, you know, just kind of gently increasing your pace throughout the like an 80 meter um, stride, and and just see how you feel. Then put your shoes back on maybe loosen up the laces a little bit and yeah. see like, hey, how do I feel now? Some people like over tighten their shoes a little bit. I remember yeah. coming from like soccer where I really wanted yeah. my soccer shoes tight. Like I would I would lace these up. And when I got into triathlon, like I, for road, I would go a lot looser because I'm like, I'm on the flat road, I'm not turning. Yeah. I just need to, and especially if I'm doing longer runs, my feet are gonna fatten up and expand a little bit. Especially yours, yeah. Especially mine, it's fat feet guys. But uh, for, for the trail running, you know, there's there's actually different ways to lace your shoe yeah. to, to help a lot. So there's a few different ways to tackle that beast. Um, dude, it is 12:21. Okay, so we, okay, we well, should get. First of all, I want to talk about the lacing first. Oh yeah, second. let's do that. So um, for you guys who are doing the audio only, you're not going to see this, but there is a version of of, um, and I'll show you this on camera. Um, lace locking. If you guys don't know this, this is a shoe that has not been lace locked, right? This is a shoe that has been lace locked. Ah. And what it is is basically that last loop on the shoe, uh, you are creating a loop and then using that as an eyelet for that last. And, and if you've never done this with your shoes, you owe it to yourself because, for example, Hoka's, in my experience personally, if I don't lace lock these, they slide around suck. so much. They move around so much. And they're meant to, it's not a, it's not a, invention this is meant it is meant to it is the reason that the last 
loop on your running shoe uh, and running has shoes two loops is two loops and it kind of curves off in a different direction the last loop is not in line with the uh last eyelet sorry is not in line with the other eyelets and that's because it gives you the option to do this ankle lock thing and it really helps you uh get some tightness around the shoe without over cinching it you know yeah. and 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 that can alleviate yeah. some tight spots so so jeff wiley says i try to tighten the heels using a marathon knot which is really what you're talking about but keeping it loose around the toes what exactly a, what is a marathon knot i think this is lace locking? i would assume yeah. that would what he mean by the the marathon um knot. i've i've wanted to do a a lace a lacing video for a long time perfect perfect time. so now we have our guest of the day okay hold on for a second we're gonna get echoey here all right here's yours there we go all right give us a second blue uh, oh, sorry mark mark <laughs> guys we're getting uh, uh, mark Morissette okay. on the line all right. mark can you hear us all right Perfect. great and and then we're gonna move people over I'm gonna make sure that you you can be heard by by everyone here all right. Oh, I gotta change this over to. Nope. Nope. Spotify. Not Skype. Not Skype. You know what? I'm just gonna go to here and then. Yeah. Input this other thing. Other things. We're getting going there. Um. One second. Um. Mark, while we get our, our little audio dialed in. Um, All right. No problem. Are we good? All right, you guys should be able to hear Mark and we can hear him as well. Yes. Well, welcome. Um, Mark, do you, you wanna uh, give a little intro to Mark? Yes, so so you guys, we're really excited to have uh, Mark Morissette, who is the founder of Strike Movement Running Shoes, the shoes we were just holding up earlier. This is a really cool pair. Um, Mark is really, came on the scene athletically as a professional snowboarder uh, for years and you know transitioned into a shoe company and those are actually some of the questions what I want to ask for yeah today totally. it's like why on earth do you want to throw your hat in the ring with with shoes and and all the the headaches I know that you guys have gone through just as kind of a shoe startup and then you know your thoughts and philosophy on, on the shoe and we could you know take some questions on on different people um, so mark um, yeah. What, uh, like what, what is, what is like strike movement in your words and you know, where, where are you guys at today? Yeah. So strike movement is basically a modern athletics company. Um, in the footwear portion, we're, we're kind of hyper-focused on becoming like the best cross trainer that you can get. Yeah. Um, so the focus is on versatility, which is, I guess, a bit, a bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> But um, yeah, we want to make uh, shoes that are, you know, great for a really broad range of activities. Um, and, and then on the apparel front, uh, that component is, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty similar. We, we use some traditional athletic styling, really uh, great um, manufacturing up here in Vancouver. And the idea is to create product that you, you know, you can basically live a really mobile life in right so um yeah just really good cuts um and, and you can you know leave your house in the morning and do pretty much anything you want yeah so one of my questions mark is around you know one of the things that i, I liked when i first started started using strikes is that the kind of the last that you guys use and the attention that you guys pay mm -hmm. in terms of the um of course it's a quality materials and i think that's that's great but like um, you really pay attention to like the last and fit of the shoe and you guys have have tried a couple different lasts depending on what the shoe is Can you talk a little bit about the shape and how you guys have developed that? Yeah, for sure. I mean all the footwear is built up, you know from the last and uh, up and out from the last and so um, if People aren't familiar with that the last is basically uh, kind of like a mold a foot shape mold that the uh, it defines the properties of the shoe. So the outline of the bottom of your foot and then the volume that's created um, on the upper. Uh, we took a lot of time kind of honing and, and finding the exact last that we wanted to use. And you're right, Nate, we had, um, we had a couple different ones. Um, 
same same bottom shape, but we had more volume in the toe. For example, on the Intervolt, that I mm. know was one of the first shoes you you ran in. Right. Um, we had more more volume there, and uh, so yeah, everything was built up from that. Um, we use um, basically the drops around 3.9 uh, mil. Okay. Um, we we have a flatter um, a flatter area underneath the heel to kind of promote like full contact of like your heel bone. Yeah. And uh, we have a long low arch, which isn't really meant as an arch. Um, uh, it, it's meant it's meant so that it, it supports your foot in, in like a neutral position. Yes. So it's not like a mechanical arch or, or like a high arch or anything. Like right, that. not not something um, overly so supportive. Those are, those are some of the qualities in the last. It's also same yeah. curve. So if you look at our shoes, there's like yep. you'll see there's kind of a bend to them. Yeah, almost like a little um, parabolic. That that is, um, you know, follows in. If you if you look if you look straight down at your foot, it might look kind of straight. But if you look at let's say your footprint. Um, walking on a on a surface if your feet are wet you'll see that there's kind of like a natural shape to it sure so, yeah, so you guys really spend a lot of time yeah, we, we built that up around all of the all of those characteristics because we um we spent a lot of time kind of researching what we really liked in the minimalist category now what made you want to put all this time and effort into making a shoe company presumably you know there were like a lot of times when when someone decides to make something it's almost like they're making it for themselves because they couldn't find what they wanted out there on the market. Yeah, and I, I definitely think that's part of our story. I mean, um, so to give you like a real brief, uh, you know, kind of history in it, uh, you know, traditionally, uh, and I know you mentioned, yeah, I did, you know, I did the snowboard thing. Um, I kind of came up as a skateboarder and, you know, skateboarders and snowboarders at the time, we didn't do much for training, <laughs> you know, like, Training for snowboarding might have been skateboarding, and uh, and that was about it. And then slowly that that kind of changed. Um, by the time I kind of hung up my skates, so to speak, in snowboarding, um, you know, my body was pretty cased, and uh, I started looking for ways to stay in shape. And to stay in shape, um, really for surfing, <laughs> was was kind of my yeah. big deal. Like I only get to go on trips for a couple weeks at a time, and so I wanted to like get in the water and be really fit. And I didn't want my back yeah. to hurt, etc. So. I was introduced to um, CrossFit pretty early on, and through CrossFit, I was introduced to minimalist running styles, mm -hmm. and um, I was just like kind of blown away, you know, because I'd, I'd started on my own path of trying to keep stay in shape, and right. you know, you go into a running store and they sell you this this runner with like a giant heel, and so you know, I developed a pretty pretty prominent heel strike, and it was hurting my hips, and all of a sudden yeah. I was like learning, you know, someone was actually showing me how to run. And uh, it wasn't hurting my body, and so it was kind of like, hey, here's running back, you know. Um, here you can have it back, and so that was, that you know, that was great. Um, yeah. And then at the time in the market, you know, you got a picture. This was early days in minimalism. Um, there were some brand, you know, the only brands kind of more like prominent. The Vibram, the Vibram innovate, Five Fingers, um, yeah, innovates. Yeah, Vibram Five Fingers. Um, which I won't comment on, and uh, you know the the, the innovations yeah. for me were were just too narrow for my particular foot. Yeah. Um. So uh, and then a, a lot of the a lot of the um, like the materials that, that were being used, like a lot of the minimal shoes were also trail runners, and so people were using a lot of like harder rubbers. Um, yeah. And you know the waist of the shoes was really kind of contoured, and the heels were really rounded, etc. And so, you know, all of a sudden, I, I'd been introduced to um, the style of running. I knew what I wanted as far as, like, a low drop shoe. Mm -hmm. and, and now I was out to find the other components, you know, like the low stack, kind of low to the ground, real minimalist. And um, I found myself in a store looking at, like, you know, 800 pairs of shoes. Yeah. And not only couldn't I find uh, those qualities, but I was looking at the aesthetic, you know, and I was, you know, coming from like skateboarding and snowboarding, I was just like, I don't really want to wear any of these. Yeah, a lot so, of the a lot of the running shoes, it's interesting, Mark, are like they're very bright and they're very flashy, and and there's certain people in the running culture who like that. And one of the things that I, I've appreciated about your your shoes is that they have a much more um, like stripped down, like simple classic look of just either one color or two colors and just kind of like a simple bolder design. 
which I think is a nice contrast to you know some of the other shoes you like out there. And one of the things that we find, this is for our audience as well, which is that you know everybody's on this on this um, live show right now. Like they are primarily thinking about their running shoes, right? Because they're runners and they're thinking about yeah. their shoes. They think about running shoes. And one of the things that we talk about in our programs and in a lot of our videos is that like how you spend the rest of your day affects the one hour that you spend running. And similarly, totally. how you know what footwear you're in for the rest of your day and how you're treating your feet definitely affects both the, the physiology of yourself as well as your movement and your bi biomechanics. And so yeah. one of the things that we, we like to talk about, and the reason I think that Nate and I both ended up in your shoes, is that it gives a really nice all-round um, alternative to wearing your running shoes 24-7. You know, both in terms of like there's lateral the, the lateral movement that you can do in the shoe, you can take it into the gym. I love using them when I go to, um, when I go on trips. Yeah. Because I'm like, hey, I can pack this one pair of shoes, I can walk around in them, I can go to the gym in them, I and can I can go, go on to, runs. I can, and I go out to dinner, and yeah. they don't look like the worst. <laughs> exactly. You know, it took me, I, I was kind of looking at that wall of shoes going like, okay, why are, you know, why is the aesthetic like that? And partly it's because I think that over the course of 20 years, all the brands got used to marketing some kind of perceived technology, right? Right. Oh, so we right. got a, you know, we got an airbag, we got a shock, we got, you know, TX 6000 rubber. It's like, and they're, they're just trying to push some kind of little gimmick, you know, and, and you'll right. see it. Like if you see a roll through marketing and once you understand, like, or you start to develop an understanding from minimalist running, you realize that all of that is just meaningless, you know? And yeah, so, yeah. If you strip, really what we, all we did was we just stripped all of the kind of false technology and then all of the branding around the false technology away from the product and we were left with really clean looking shoes and, and you know, I agree with you and I, I think that was also part of the, the need or the, you know, the, what we were trying to solve was how do I, you know, I, these shoes are so comfy, I want to just wear them all day, right? Right, and right. And depending on your lifestyle or what you're doing for work, if that's not a barrier to you, then yeah, you want to spend your whole day in a shoe that's that comfy and has those characteristics. Now, do totally. you want that shoe okay. to look like a fishing lure? You know, probably right. not. Right. So we, yeah, right. it was a combination of those two elements. Yeah, that, that kind of led to the the yeah. moment yeah, of I mean, like, hey, you know, there, there's a pocket here. <laughs> I had that first pair of intervals that I used. That was the first pair of um, of strikes that I had, and. I wore, I actually wore straight through the bottom. I had them for long enough and I was, I, at that point I was not putting in a ton of mileage. I wasn't running like 60 or 70 mile weeks or anything, but I was running regularly and working out regularly and I used them as my all around shoe. And I, I loved it because it was, it, it really did fit um, kind of like a general shoe that I could go running in and be completely comfortable in. Yeah. And then also if I took it to the gym, one of the things that I really don't like when I go into the gym is having a running shoe like, like I'm holding up a Brooks shoe right now, which is a great shoe. You've actually yeah. really enjoyed this one. Um, but if you have any sort of lateral movement at all, there's like a cliff. And that really, really yeah. Um, yeah. frustrates me because in the gym, even if I'm just mobilizing, I don't want my ankle under that sort yeah. of tension. Um, so, so I really sure. appreciate that strikes yeah. are, are allowed, allow me to do that. You know, Mark, a key part of our philosophy is that um, to be better at the specific, we need to have, we need to pay attention to the general, like supportive foundation athletically, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm the runner who wants to extend out to 50 miles or 100 miles, we just interviewed a, a runner who just ran Western States 100 just a couple days ago, um, you know, you need a body that can handle the punishment, the miles, the ups, right. the downs, and like, you need to be strong. And there's this weird mix of like, well, I'm getting some specific strength, like, Burpees and squats and lunges don't replace those long runs that need to be done, but they're an important piece in supporting your ability to do it. And what I like, um, it just kind of what you were saying earlier, and, and basically the title of our talk is like, are your running shoes killing you? Is that, you know, we need the equipment and gear that's going to work with what we're trying to do, right? Yep. So if we, we have the gear for the more specific stuff, but when we go back and do the more general, we need gear for that too. Absolutely. So um, tell us a little bit more, when you guys went in specifically and you created a shoe that was more around, because now you have you have a couple different lines, right? And so you yeah. have some shoes that are much more just like, uh, I won't say fashion shoes, but definitely more like everyday shoes. And then you yeah. have 
Um, you know, the one that I'm holding up, uh, which one, what is this called again? The chili, the chill pill, the chill pill. Chili was the second name. Right. Chili's they tested the chili and they were like, we'll, we'll go chill pill. So the chill pill I, I consider to be, um, more of like a, a gym shoe, like a kind of a, uh, a cross trainer. And then the interval is probably more designed for running, correct? Uh, actually, actually, the way the way it actually broke out, and, and you know, here's the interesting: is that the end consumer is going to decide really what, right. like, what the best use is, right? Like, yeah. but the interval actually has more lateral. Um, uh, we have what on the original what was called like the thermal harness. So we basically had laminated thermal piece that keeps your foot more stable laterally. Mm -hmm. um, and then the chill pill was kind of like you know, an aesthetic that we really like that we put on the same outsole and then we had meant for it to be a little bit more casual, but everyone just started training in it. You know, it's the same thing with the, we just put out a slip on and you know, we were thinking like, yeah, we want this slip on to be, uh, you know, deliver as much performance as possible, but we didn't yeah. necessarily expect people to be like, well, I'm wearing this to the gym, you know, or like, right. Right. Um, right. And, but, but, they're going to decide how they want to use it. Like I just actually, um, I, I signed up for a, uh, for a sprint try in, in September and I'm going to run in the, um, in the slip on cause the transition's so fast and, you know, I've just been doing some building up my, my mileage and, and it's super comfy and not even an issue to run in that for, you know, five, 10 plus K. Right. So, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, because you know, I, I helped design that, but I wouldn't have pictured myself choosing that shoe to, to, to run that distance and necessarily, right? It's interesting. Right, right. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Um, so um, yeah, we, we definitely have, so I can break down, yeah. you know, the, the first outsole that we launched was the stable platform and that's yep. very much like a midfoot strike runner with characteristics that make it good in the gym. So we took you know, the, the wide forefoot, low stack height, uh, really lightweight. Uh, we distributed the rubber inserts so you get a, a, a rubber contact point in any direction. And then the, then we flattened out like from the mid, from the blade of your foot through your heel is like dead flat. And that's something that was missing in a lot of shoes. And so you had a, a nice, that's why it's called the stable platform because it really gives yeah. you this nice flat, comfortable Because a lot of, a lot of heels are, they're actually curved up a little bit. Yeah. 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 And um, so the only, the only downside to that outsole was that it wasn't rope proof. Um, and we started right, then because, developing um, the, the Right. Yeah. Because CrossFitters so, need to, to be able to climb ropes and do things like that. And it puts a lot of weird stress and pressure on your shoe. And if you don't have the right rubber, the, the, the rope will chew through your shoe quickly. And this actually happened to my wife. She was running a pair of just running shoes in the gym and she was doing a lot of rope climbing and she got this like crazy like groove it was almost like when you take a hot corn uh and you like rotate it in butter and it was basically yeah. Like really that yeah it'll it'll tear it apart fast so that's it's, the other part exactly. like you, it's not it's not so much the uh climb as it is the descent right people will use their shoe as a brace and then just the sheer heat of yeah, that rope yeah. on your midsole just will melt into the eba and so, you know, that, that shoe, and I mean, people, um, I mean, it's, for most of those shoes, they're in like the seven ounce category on that outsole. Like it's incredibly yeah. lightweight, right? So it, it couldn't have been expected to do everything. But um, we decided we wanted to, uh, you know, develop the cross platform. And so we took most of the same uh, parameters as far as like the width. We actually made a, a little bit wider under the, um, the lateral yeah. side of your, the waist of your foot. We extended the um, the heel um, almost a centimeter out on the, uh, on the back, so you can get further over your posterior chain. And then we used a single rubber um, piece as the outsole. Now, um, so e even though it's more substantial, the flexibility and it's a little denser. The flexibility is exactly the same, so you get total um, total flexibility in in, in all directions. Yeah. And it's real proof, and we um, it was an, it's an interesting kind of design path um, through that outsole. But we basically yeah. uh, instead of making any of the edges kind of chined and more positioning it more towards training, we really stuck to this like broad spectrum. Yeah. 
And so even though it's better for lifting, we, we actually have like radius every single edge. And if cool. you look at the outsole, it's, it's actually designed so that you can walk on the edges of your feet. That's um, great. So it's, it's incredibly stable and predictable. Yeah. Um, so, so Mark, we have a lot of runners on in, you know, watching right now and they're kind of asking different questions. Um, they're not always going to want to, they're going to want to know before we go too far into the weeds of like, you know, the different shoe specs They're like, they're like, okay. Um, most of the time I'm just spending time in a running shoe. The title of this talk is your running shoes killing you. So they're like, I'm curious, what other shoes should I wear? We've kind of hit that in different ways. But if these guys were to go and, and check out a pair of strikes, we've been showing your website, what would be the one shoe that you recommend they start with um, for you know that kind of all around cross training? Because really that's where most of our runners are gonna come from. We have some people who CrossFit, but we don't probably have that many. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Um, I would say um, one of my favorite shoes right now on the line just for strictly running would be the, um, the Interval 2. So, the Interval 2. Um, it's, it's from last, it's from last season, and it's got a ripstop upper. Um, they weigh in at around 7.2 ounces, and it's on that stable platform outsole. Awesome. And if people have a really strong uh, or a stronger kind of pose running style and really want a, the static feedback, then um, most of those people are, are actually running in, in the cross platform because they yeah. get that really kind of snappy uh, proprioception. That's really cool. And we, we really love that with runners. We sometimes recommend runners go, uh, you know, barefoot so they actually can get that kinesthetic feedback with the ground. And, um, and, and what's nice is that with a shoe like this, you can get that feedback while still protecting your feet, doing it on sidewalks, on pavement, on, on cold weather and everything else. Totally. Yeah. We, we, we kind of refer to the, what, like the specs that we've put together as intelligent minimalism. So it's like, I like we're going to maintain that, that ground yeah. feel, but we're going to do it with enough cushioning that you're not, it's not like a barefoot kind of design or like an overly minimalist design where, you know, you, you might have that, um, that side effect of, of kind of too much impact on your feet. Yeah, and and uh, Mark, you, on your site, you have intervals and interval knits. Which one would be the interval two? The interval? The, yeah, the interval. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right, great. That's just the second version of it. Cool. Um, so, you know, mo moving on to kind of kind of some other fun things, um, like what what are, are you, you running right now, Mark? Like what do you, you got planned anything, you know, athletically while you're running around and making shoes and yeah. I'm running, saving I mean, the world? I remember you, Nate, in, in an interview you did a long time ago, you said, you know, like running, running should be something you kind of do as part of your day. Um, yeah. And I do a lot of that, you know, like it. If I'm gonna go get a coffee, like I'll run to get coffee, you know. Um, oh, that's cool. Or I'll run, I'll run to go get lunch. And right now my mileage isn't isn't crazy. Like I said, I'm working up to um, uh, for a sprint try, so I'm just trying to get to like a a speedy 5k. Um, yeah. So I'm probably gonna you know limit my mileage to like 10 to 15k, um, and mm -hmm. then kind of hone that in and just try and get faster and faster. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but you, you might want to give me some tips on that. <laughs> you know, we train. do have a, we have an all new 5K program coming out. I know, actually, you'd love it. We're we're releasing a new uh, 5K program that would be uh, oh awesome. You yeah. know, integrating a lot of our you know strength and movement mobility stuff that I know you love, along with the uh, the actual running stuff that you know we all got to do. Well, I I'm excited to try some of these out. You can yeah. expect an email from me with uh, with some with some. Uh, the other things that Mark, Mark yeah, has this, always this been kind of amazing. generous. Yeah. Um, and Mark, we, we so cool. appreciate your time and, and being on here. Um, so guys, uh, definitely click the Gleam link to enter. You can get a pair of these shoes. They are super comfortable. They've got like some really fun colors and designs. Like it's pretty unique. Like there are not that many people in the running community that have like leopard print slip-on shoes. And these are like an awesome shoe, as I said, to like wear around wear before your your race yeah. and your warm ups and then like slip your shoes on for for the race itself. I, mean, I'm, super I awesome. think our main thing that I, the the strongest point for me is just that running shoes are running shoes and and if you're not you're doing a bunch of other things which we all are part of our programs yeah. you don't necessarily want to wear your hokas uh, for your everyday shoes or in the gym and if you are just transitioning your running shoes to be your everyday shoes 
consider getting, um, you know, taking care of your feet by putting them in a different pair of shoes that is meant to be more all around because you're not running all day. Totally. And so, so that, that's actually been a big change for me, you know, getting to be, um, especially just considering like the, the heel drop. Like, yeah. You know, you may not want to be in a minimalist shoe all the time when you're running, but having a minimalist shoe for your the rest of your, your day, day is really is actually a much easier it's transition really, really and a really healthy thing. Um, but Mark, thank you so much for, for jumping on. really appreciate all the, um, the time and uh, us just super generous with um, giving our, you know, our people a discount and then, and then the giveaway. So yeah. really appreciate that. Thanks, Mark. And, uh, of course, yeah. yes. We'll talk soon. Thank you guys right. for having me on and um, hope to be in touch with you guys soon. All right, sounds cheers. good. All right. Take care. Um, All right, bye guys. <clears throat> All right. All right, so guys, that was Mark. Um, really psyched to have him on. I know you can tell he's obsessed with shoes when he started going into rubber last and heels and millimeter this, two uh, millimeter this. You guys, you want your shoe guys to be that obsessed. Yeah. Even if you're and, not. <laughs> and you know, we had Mark on, we have talked to a lot of running companies. Um, you know, there are some companies that we, we've had close touch with like Ultra, um, Golden, who's the founder of Ultra, oh. we have a close relationship with and we talk to him that dude is regularly. Um, he's actually just recently outfit all of our sponsored athletes with new shoes. Yeah, Scooby um, Runner on there. He's um, yeah, and so one of our runners. On, on the contrary side, we've also been in touch with some bigger companies who don't, you know, they have large shoe co companies and like when we give them feedback and when we have uh, dialogue with them, they don't necessarily have in mind that some of the same things that we think runners need. And so, um, it's, it's really interesting. It's very interesting to see the shoe companies, like the biggest shoe companies, you're like, hey, like, you know, everybody I know is an X brand shoe. Um, find shoes that work for you. And I don't mean just, um, if you are, I've always been in, let's say you're, you're a New Balance person, right? Figure out what type of shoe it is that you're running in and then go try other shoes, not just other brands, but other brands that yeah. have this, because all the brands are gonna have a shoe like the one. That's gonna fit in that yeah, category. And kind of start to figure out the differences. And I, I encourage you, now you guys, obviously now we're in the running business, so people send us shoes. And so I understand that there's an expense with shoes. Um, but here's the thing, when you pay for shoes, um, you're gonna, one, shoes don't go bad very easily, right? And if you, so if you pay for six pairs of shoes, it's an upfront cost, but you, they should last you six times as long. So we're not saying you should spend more money on shoes. What we're saying is buy them in groups so that you are yeah. using them like a quiver of tools as opposed to saying, hey, I have one pair of shoes, it's my running shoes, and then I have, you know, use your shoes at the same it's time. A different, it's a different it's mindset an, adjustment. And the but other, not more money. But not necessarily yeah. more money. And the other thing I'd recommend for you guys who are really new and this is a little intimidating and you're like, which shoe should I have? Like, go to the running shoe and, and potentially start with that general purpose shoe. If yeah. you want to go with something a little lighter, more minimal, go with uh, like a tempo trainer, just yeah. like a lighter shoe and use that and then look in your house like do you have a pair of slip-ons do you have a pair of of uh what are they vans or just yeah. something something like some other shoe that you could wear throughout the day um i have this company shoes called bucket feet that i like they're just like fun slip-on shoes they cost 25 dollars i wear both of these shoes i'm holding up a hoka yeah. and i'm holding up a a saba moccasin leather moccasin and totally. obviously i don't wear these to run in but i mean my feet are in constantly in different things, and I think that that is an important, an important aspect. Um, let's so get some questions. Let's really get some questions. So, guys, thanks for hanging in there on some of that technical talk. I know it got a little heavy, but uh, really important, and valuable for runners to to see that people are thinking about the things that we put on our feet every day in that way, and it's nice to like kind of you know be a fly on a wall for that conversation. Um, All right, let's see. Do you guys do a monthly shoe compare or recommendation? We do um, uh, reviews of shoes as it come out. Um, we constantly sent more shoes and we can't review everything yeah. that people send us. I think he has a little follow up. And what is the follow up? I uh, was thinking different types, like one is for the gym, one for running minimalist barefoot, stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe an everyday all arounder. I mean, the so one of the things I want to stress here is that we're not saying, hey, you need an all round shoe instead of a running shoe or you want a maximalist yeah. instead of a minimalist. What I'm saying is, find the quiver of shoes that is is going to work for you, and then you know it's it's a you know I used to actually when I was doing more higher mileage I used to write the date that I that I started yeah. wearing the shoe on the back of the shoe, um, maybe not the most fashionable thing, but for running shoes who cares? Um, but take keep track of like when you buy the shoe and then what mileage you're putting in it because if you get six pairs of shoes, 
like that could last you over a year in terms yeah. of like all of your mileage. Um, but you don't, you don't have, if you're paying with one pair of shoes and you're going, hey, two months for this pair of shoes, two months for this other pair of shoes, you don't get the variance for your yeah. feet. I think it's a very, very healthy thing if you're punishing your body in terms of the mileage. Like having your feet in different t uh, pairs of shoes is a really, really healthy thing. Keep, it keeps your feet stronger. Uh, so for one thing. And a good helpful tip too when you know your shoes are starting to, to die mm -hmm. other than just the mileage is that the wrinkle the wrinkles you can start to see and this like Craig's kind of got some time in the shoe you can start to see some of like the little like crinkles on this um, I'm trying to hold this in a way that, that only that happens with the EVA foam though like this gel that um, wrinkle from oh, Ultra um, is kind of and, and a lot of shoes now are blending um, rubber with EVA foam and they, you know, they call all different types of things in this case here's, a, here's it, another uh, example what do they call this one again? I can't uh, remember. Blown rubber? No, blown rubber is more the EVA foam. But yeah. the... Another another example is look at the tread, right? I can see with Craig that like this has really started to wear as opposed to like what it only was. You could say like, okay, if the color's starting to come off, this is starting to wear down. You're like, eh, maybe I'm I'm getting towards the end with this this yeah. shoe. I you know I also feel like um, when you have multiple pairs of shoes, now you can tell the difference about when a shoe is going dead. And, and you can tell like, hey, this is no longer serving me. But when you only have one pair of shoes, it, the, the transition's so slow, you forget what it's like to be in a fresh pair of shoes. So having those staggered and having that change is actually a really important thing. Yeah, totally. Um, let's surf and get a few more uh, things here. So Marshall asks, have you checked out the Noble shoes? Noble? Yeah, no, have you? I've heard of them. I have not heard of them. Yeah, they're kind of like the Allbirds. Oh yeah, similar sort okay. of style, like kind of like this like wool blended shoe. They're sure. kind of cool. Um, and do we have a discount for Strike? If you are a training club member, ooh. Um, oh, so guys, if you don't way. know this, um, and and we've kind of have not advertised this publicly, but um, if you are a training club member, we have discounts from a lot of different the companies that we work with. What we tell them is like, hey, um, a lot of them don't want to give public discounts because it's just spread all over the internet. But what we've told them is like, hey, if you um, would like to offer a private discount only to people in our training club, then then we'll put that up on our website behind a paywall. And so for you guys that are training club members, check it out in the community. Um, yeah, there's a discount yeah. section. You'll actually see a bunch of relationships with brands that you can get some discounts there. And it's just our way of, you know, Giving back, yeah. Giving back and 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 we, making sure that you know your membership with us is worthwhile. Yeah, we have these relationships with with brands, and so we're able to do that. And um, for some of them, it is a pretty steep discount. So, so for example, I talked to Norma Tech. You want to hold up one of the boots? Oh yeah. We're just using these today. Uh, Norma Tech are the recovery boots, which I think you've seen us talk about before. Nate and I both yeah. love these. These are an expensive item, and we have negotiated a discount. Um, that we have to kind of verify that you're a training club. It's just kind of a process, but it's a big discount for our training club members. Yeah. And um, yeah, and so we are gonna continue to build that out and just think about it as, you know, if you're part of our training club, it is a club and you get discounts and benefits and, and we wanna keep increasing that. Totally. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys got some lot of great specific questions here. I wanted to try to end on one or two that I thought would be, would be pretty good. Um, Oh, okay. So Swifty Runner says flats are cushion shoes for cross country races. So there was a, there was another question around cross country training, cross country races. Like you did a lot of this. Like, yeah. What did what did you use? Yeah. I mean cross country for I mean granted I was a competitive cross country runner. So uh, when it came to racing, the flat they were I didn't wear flats. I wore spikes. And Super light. And light. they were not. They were like basically socks with spikes in you them. Wouldn't, would you wear socks in them? No. No, exactly. No. So no, you wouldn't wear socks. No, wouldn't wear socks because they'd get muddy. And how many how many miles could up. those shoes handle? Well, I mean, look, it's like a handful of races. Yeah, right? I mean, we weren't looking at. Sh I mean, the shoes would last for seasons. I mean, I wouldn't really. We were, of course, getting shoes because we we're part of a team. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't. Mileage is not a thing you're worried about when you're coming to racing shoes. Like racing shoes you're only rate like how long is a cross country race 10k 15k at best and so now if you're talking or about 5k a, if you're in high yeah, school yeah if you're talking about a trail run that's different than cross country a trail run i mean trail running is different because you're talking about like long distances marathon stuff, distances yeah. that sort of stuff totally different game if you're talking about cross country as a sport 
Like it is, I would say one terrain is really important. I would not wear like if you're potentially going into a muddy course, you don't want you want, you want super flats, grip. yeah, and you don't want stuff with a lot of cushion because you are in uneven area. Like that's the lat. I want to be pummeling the ground and not thinking about anything other than like my foot when I hit the ground is going to grip and keep moving forward. That being said, if you're going on cross country courses that go across roads. You get that kind of you're skating on ice for a few, yeah, minutes, a few seconds. You know, and sometimes you can get you can get cross country shoes. They used to think this way where you could get like spikes that could screw in or screw out. So yeah, I kind yeah. of remember that. And so, but so, then, but for other training days, you probably you might want to have a little exposure to the spikes, but you're probably wearing other shoes. Yeah, when you're training. Well, I only broke in my spikes by doing striders. Really, like I my, my spikes. I mean, because during a race that's a five k race. You're not, you know, you can pummel your feet through just about every, anything. You're not worried about breaking in your shoes. Like, it's not like a marathon where you're like, hey, I don't want to use new shoes on a marathon. Yeah. A 5K, 10K race, you break them in using striders, you know, maybe do um, a quick workout in them, but then you're using them in races. Um, when I was, as an example, when I was a steeplechaser, we had special steeplechase shoes that had like Ew. holes in the bottom where you'd go through water and then the water would drain out. Uh, and of course, there's no socks in that game at all. Isn't that like a Spartan shoe now? Yeah, exactly. Keep going through those water holes. I didn't wear running socks at all until fairly recently, I would say. Till I said, dude, yeah. your apartment's I, stinky. I didn't wear running shoes. Uh, I didn't wear uh, running socks in high school. I didn't wear them in college. I didn't. Can we can we end on my like our favorite, one of my favorite Craig's story of like after college, running, purist would just like leave. Uh, yeah. Like, what would you do? I, there was a point in time where I was living in Seattle, which was a beautiful place, and my place was maybe a few blocks from Lake Washington. And so I would leave my apartment with either just a pair of shorts on, that's it, no socks, so no shoes, No nothing. socks, no, no shirt. Or, no, no shirt. I mean, I grew up running in really hot weather. Yeah. Shirts, I only started wearing shirts once people started making fun of me. <laughs> and, once you turned 30. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and. And even now, like I would much rather run shirtless. It's just that in San Francisco, yeah. it's not a thing. Um, oh, people run thing? naked here, but not That's shirtless. True. So, so I would go, and then I would either run with shoes on, and in which case I would, at the end of my run, I would ditch my shoes, go jump in the lake, swim from one dock to the next dock, and then get out, run back, grab my shoes, and then run home barefoot. That was awesome. I mean, it was the best way. To, no, in the no lake cell in the morning, phone. No, cell phone, nothing. I literally had just a pair of like a... Just remember, your apartment key? And we're talking about like, at that point in time, I was just out of college. So the running shorts that I had were my old track shorts. Oh, And we're man. talking this... It's so a small it's real estate right uh, there. Yeah. It's covered. Oh, yeah. So the vast majority of Craig was exposed to Seattle. I was, I was a... Um, yeah, that was, that was good times. I wish that we had water that you could jump in comfortably in San Francisco, <laughs> but you don't. Well, good news uh, that we are racing the San Francisco Marathon, which is coming up, uh -huh. and uh, I think Craig, you should bring back that look. Yeah. Oh, you know what? <laughs> don't don't speak too soon. So this is a good question. We need a training update. We need a quick training update. You guys will end on that week six mm -hmm. of our half marathon training. Uh, I did both of our hard runs this week. Yeah. Um, the the first you know kind of quality run on Monday was which you probably did on Tuesday, mm -hmm. was the six by three minutes. Yep. Um, I was feeling crispy from that because I'd just done a long run the day before, mm. and I never recommend those two things back to back, so that was hard. Yesterday, I did uh, the seven mile run where we had two by two miles at 10K race pace. 10K race pace is intense. It was intense. I was probably not at full 10K race pace, but it felt like a 10K effort. With like, give me an example, were you at like, Six minute pace, six uh, I was like, I went, my first one I went 6.30, 6.10, and yeah. then my next two over a little more rolling terrain, I was like 6.28, 6.28. Nice. So okay. it was like, you know, for where I am right now, guys. I don't actually know where I was. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Uh, and this is like, because of my calf and Achilles stuff, I'm like just, you know, getting back in. Real quick up there on your side before we set Yeah, I had my hamstrings really tighten up on that six by three I minutes. I saw that on Strava. Yeah, um, I, like by the end of it, I was just like, and part of it is I was sick last week, I didn't get to run at all. Uh, I was fighting a fever and coughing and all this stuff like you guys saw. So, um, coming back into it, I hit that hard workout and I was like, man, it felt great to be outside, but my hamstrings just whoop into yeah. a ball. So yesterday I spent stretching, um, Mobilizing mostly, doing a little bit of strength work, and then today I did the uh, the two. I my parents called me in the middle of it. 
I was probably going in 640s or something. It was not it was not a super blistering pace. But I'm feeling um I'm feeling good. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel pretty I want to see how today uh, this week's long run goes and um I'm going to try not runs. to blow it out. I think I want to I'm going to go a little bit longer. A little and, longer, yeah. a little more conservative. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thus wraps today's live session, episode 57. Thank you for tuning in. If you are listening on our podcast, welcome. This means I actually have to take the audio. And I know. It. Do us a favor and make sure you hit subscribe for future ones. Correct. Leave us a comment. Uh, if you guys are on YouTube and you like these things, your new time, throw a comment in the sections. Give us the old thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Any recommendations for future live show topics? We are here for you. Yep. We exist. For your amusement and entertainment and you know that's pretty much it that's it <laughs> that's pretty much it anyways Guys, join us next week we'll both be here and uh, we'll see you as per usual um, and if you have not hit that gleam link and get this is a great offer a pair for free yeah. pair of shoes and um, we will have more goodies coming at you I, I know Holly's been working hard to I know. drum those up all right now we're gonna do the the awkward oh wait don't wait for thing. the outro here it goes here's the outro coming in Coming in hot. <laughs>